And that is it. NAM 2022 is in the books. All said and done. Let's talk about my favorite finds, some setbacks of the show, some advantages, and all that good stuff. Oh, and maybe some other struggles that I personally had. Why not? Stick around. We're going to get started right now. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Chris, and you are watching the 11th fret. I've missed you guys dearly. The set has missed you guys dearly. I am glad to be back home and to unpack everything that I discovered at the NAM show for 2022 in Anaheim, California. NAM is a giant event for musicians. We lust after gear. We are excited about new gear. Tone chasing problems will be answered. Maybe we'll finally write that hit song that'll get us famous or whatever it is. Sometimes we just wanna have the itch scratched as well. The itch being, I wanna sound more like X person or Y person or whatever. There's a lot of reasons that we might really, really get excited about the NAM show. Sometimes it's just to, to satisfy like a craving for something new. There's a lot of reasons. There really is. But this is supposedly Winter NAM pushed forward into summer. Nashville, which is where Summer NAM usually takes place, is not happening this year. And as I understand it, it's not gonna happen next year as well. The Winter NAM will be moved to April, according to various sources that I connected with. So we should be seeing Winter NAM in Anaheim again this upcoming April for 2023. And then in 2024, we will see Winter NAM again in Anaheim in January. And then we'll see the return of Summer Nam in Nashville. So I was excited to go. This is the first year I actually showed up as the 11th Fret YouTube channel. Previous years, I was there as a buyer for Pro Audio. So I would typically buy like monitors or control surfaces, mixers, things like that, microphones, all that stuff. As a guitar player though, I always really enjoyed walking the floor and I always did every year, but no one really was interested in talking to me back then because I wasn't there to buy or promote anything that they had to sell. This year was a little different, so it was kind of fun because this channel has been around for arguably about a year now. I, I got a little notification from YouTube that it's been like my channel's birthday. I don't think I've had that many videos, but okay, okay, I'll, I'll take it here for a year. Yay, happy birthday. There were reasons I wanted to show up because A, I wanted to be able to promote the channel. That was a big one. I wanted to be able to get content for you guys to show off some things that I discovered, to make new connections, to establish new lines of communication with other vendors and brands to try and get more products sent this way so I can review it and talk about it, share my opinions. And I wanted to connect with other YouTubers as well, which I did. I was able to meet some and reconnect with old friends. It was just kind of a party. Going into NAM this year though, was filled with a lot of uncertainty. There was a lot of buzz going into this year that there was gonna be no Fender, no Gibson, no Paul Reed Smith, no Marshall, no Schechter, no Diodario. The list goes on. There's a lot of brands that just did not have their usual presence at NAM this year. And it really was kind of sad to see some of these brands miss out. And I get it because their workloads in some respects were pretty severe where they just really didn't need to be at NAM. They didn't want to spend that money to promote anything at NAM because NAM booths are very, very, very expensive. I don't think you could really appreciate how expensive some of these booths can actually be like in the millions for three days they can get that high absolutely so i can totally respect why some of these brands decided to catch up on some work due to supply chain issues and get their orders out to their customers that's a good and noble thing and those brands usually were kind of like the draw of the show i always loved the quote-unquote basement in years past, or as some people might call it, Hall E. That's what it's actually called. Hall E was usually filled with new vendors or budget vendors, things like that, like stuff we hadn't really seen before because they're new to the market or they're just a small company and they don't have a lot of money to rent these spaces at NAMM. So they go down to the basement and pay a lower price to feature their, their wares to the public. And it was always fun to walk down there, but this year there was no Hall E. We had four halls, hall A, B, C, and D. And amidst all these various halls, there was a lot of empty booths and brand presence that had no one working there, but there was their signage, things like that. It was kind of sad in a lot of ways. And I can understand why people might not want to show up to NAMM. I get it. You know, it was just sad to see a lack of presence there. But of the brands that did show up, 
damn, it was a party. It was really, really fun. I walked around, I schmoozed, I met with people, I hung out, I had long conversations, I made great new friendships, great new contacts. It was just, it was so much fun. And for me, this year was probably the most fun I've ever had at an AM show. And I've been to many, many, many NAMM shows. Again, the most fun. I discovered brands I'd never even considered looking for in prior years, and I met brand owners that, that were proud of their stuff, and still working very, very hard to get their name out there on the market. So they're out there, boots on the ground, connecting with everybody, and it was so much fun to be able to meet some of these iconic luthiers and innovators, repair techs that I've heard the names of before, but just never met in person. I mean, it was so much fun fun. This year was probably the best NAMM show that I've ever been to. And as I'm reading around social media right now, I'm not alone in this. So I don't, I'm not going to really say that Fender and Gibson and Schecter and all them shouldn't show up, but you know, I, it, it was kind of fun without them there. I don't know. What I want to uncover today though, is just some of the things that I experienced, some things that I noticed that stood out to me that I thought was like, wow, I have to stop and look at this stuff and play with it. Sometimes you'll walk around the floor and you'll get pulled into a booth and have your ear talked off by a sales rep or the owner or whatever, and that's totally cool. Sometimes it might reveal something you never knew you always wanted, or you might want to run away from there as fast as humanly possible because what they're saying just doesn't interest you or you don't believe it. In this case, everybody was just having fun. I walked around and I got to meet everybody from like, like Doug Cower at Cower guitars he was probably one of my favorite people that i connected with there because he was so funny so down to earth and his guitars are absolutely stunning i got to see a ton of other youtubers around got to stop and talk and for the first time which i thought was really really awesome for me is i was recognized many times feel like hey 11th fret okay okay i i don't think i've arrived yet but that's like that's like you know waving me down to land I mean, we're, we're coming in, right? That was pretty fun. I really, really enjoyed that for just working so hard on this channel and having you guys too to thank for that because if it wasn't for you guys subscribing and liking and sharing the videos, then this channel wouldn't be growing and I just mm, appreciate that so, so, so very much. Thank you to all for just that in general, just believing in me and being excited super cool day one when i showed up i was exposed to the guitar floor i walked in and it was it was magic i just kind of got to walk the floor get the lay of the land a little bit figure out where vendors were talking to people people recognized me i connected with them i shared business cards with my channel information and everything was super cool by the end of the day i was able to realize what i wanted to do and i saw some youtube comments of what people wanted me to see on their behalf. I was ready to go. And then by day two, I blew my voice out and uh, I was so tired. I was so tired. I didn't get a lot of sleep that night. I had every bit of intention to walk everywhere else to see other parts of NAM that I originally wasn't thinking of going to. But then I got suckered into meeting more people, having long conversations like, you know, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, sometimes an hour with other YouTubers or with other brand owners, like founders of, of different brands, like just cool stuff. Seeing guitar players that I idolize, that I just geeked out over. I mean, I seriously did. I really geeked on certain people, of course. After that, I was like, man, okay. So I'm supposed to go to Amigos Guitar Show on Sunday, which would be over day three of NAMM. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. I should probably come back because I still have so many things I have to do. And so I was on the fence. I was like, maybe I can go to Amigos for half the day and then come back to NAMM or vice versa. I'm not really sure yet. So <laughs> I go to bed on Saturday night. I'm sleeping at my friend's house and he has a new puppy. And this new puppy is probably like six months, nine months old, something like that. Golden Retriever, beautiful dog, sweetheart. She's just an angel, looks beautiful, but she's a puppy. So I go to sleep that night and I take my glasses off and I put them on the coffee table because I'm sleeping on the couch in the living room. I wake up the next morning and all I hear is crunching. I think the dog is eating like a bone or whatever. Long story short, if you don't recognize what these glasses, I mean, I know they're black frame, but they might look a little different and it's because they are different. 
because the previous set of glasses was chewed up and destroyed. I couldn't wear them. So I decided to go to NAMM after all because going to Amigo's guitar show, I wouldn't be able to see much. I'm very nearsighted. I can't see far away. So I decided just to go back to NAMM. So I, I got to NAMM. Everything was just blurry. At that point, I'm like, all right, well, at least I know where everything's at. I'm going to stick to probably the guitar area. However, I wandered into the wrong door and I got stuck in pro audio and that was that. And it was cool because Nam was so broken up that there was Rapco and Proco all the way over in pro audio and Proco makes the rat. I wandered around, I met with Mogami, and I got to see Cloud, who makes the Cloud Lifter, and just all these other brands. On Stage Stands was over there, so it was a lot of fun over on that side too, but for the most part, a lot of those things weren't really relevant to my interests. Not saying it's bad, but I'm not a big DJ, so I don't get excited about stuff like that. I appreciate the art, and I did stop and watch. I want to say it was DJ Revolution, if my memory serves me correctly. And <laughs> And it was fun to watch. Again, not something I would go out of my way to watch, but it was something I could easily appreciate. From that point in time, I was able to wander around further back to the guitar section and stop off at Gator Cases and connect with them. But the problem was, is again, I'm very nearsighted. Although I already had kind of the lay of the land for the guitar area, I was not fully aware of the displays that I had missed previously. So when you're in the guitar area and you're looking around, sometimes a brand might stick out in the yonder, something you recognize. You're like, oh yeah, perfect. I wanna go see what they're up to. And then all of a sudden you turn around and you're like, yeah, let's walk like five booths that way and see what they're up to. Meanwhile, you're skipping all these other booths. Well, then you're blind. Like you can't see further out and that becomes kind of a problem. Now you're just kind of like wandering and you're able to see some stuff you never thought to look for prior. I was able to discover these other brands of things that excited me. I mean, I saw like a pedal board design that I'd never seen before, which really, really like I thought was amazing. I hope to be able to demo that on this channel in the future. I saw other speaker brands that I had never even heard of before. I saw electronics components for amplifier repair or amplifier building. I saw CNC machinery that's there for luthiers to build new guitars. Smaller guitar brands themselves that I'd never even heard of but build amazing stuff. I mean, the list goes on. When you can't see far away, you have to like rely on your legs to take you from A to B and your eyes to like make sure you're not gonna trip on anything and to not trip on stuff you are also like taking in everything from a few feet away so day three was a lot of fun but unfortunately because my glasses were consumed I was not able to go out and check out some of these pro audio brands that some people asked me to in previous comments and so for that, I deeply apologize, but I couldn't see. So hopefully you can forgive me. Outside of that entire story of Nam for me, I want to be able to share with you guys my favorite finds from this show. Now we start off with Reverend and just wow. Reverend is always aiming to please, honestly. I mean, they're not like the go-to guitar for me. There's some of their body styles that I'm not really into, and that's fine. I mean, everybody's tastes are different, but uh, I mean, this array of, of guitars this time through was just beautiful. Then Billy Corgan has a new uh, couple models that came out this year with Reverend with that triple string tree at the very top, just mind-blowingly cool. Those pickup covers are a little silly, a little ridiculous, but I'm, I'm kind of into them at the same time because I love Smashing Pumpkins. Now this here was kind of like the guitar I gravitated towards and it played great, it, it sounded great, it looks beautiful. I was so into it. Now we go to Bad Cat and I love to see Bad Cat here because Bad Cat's been kind of missing from the public eye, at least I think they've been for some time. In 2005 I saw them everywhere and they just disappeared. Now we're on to the uh, Lil Rat. The Lil Rat's cool because like now you can have like a tiny actual rat on your pedal board that's not gonna take a giant chunk of space. Uh, the price is gonna be pretty good. I'm, I'm really into it. Now we're onto the Music Man side of things and this Stingray really caught my eye. This roasted maple neck and that burst. Oh my God. And then we got the Cutlass here. Uh, the Cutlass is Again, just stunning, beautiful, like an S-style guitar. Played outstanding. 
Wow. And then we got your classic Stingray base, five string, uh, but just a beautiful wood grain, beautiful finish. Now we're onto something that really caught my eye. This is from Gator. Gator has these new gig bags that have come out in all these new colors. Uh, they already had the black one out before, but these colors are stunning. I love that green. I always gravitate towards green. That's my favorite color. But all those colors are really, really, really great. I like that it's got the neck cradle on the inside that you can Velcro, uh, like strap your, your guitar in place. It's got really thick padding all around and great pockets. Uh, you have uh, straps to carry the guitar with with ease. It's light, not going to break your back. I was really excited about them. Way to go, Gator, on this one. Look at this. Look at this neck cradle. Just well built. I love Gator cases. I really do. I'm a fan. I've, I've always loved Gator. Now we got Silvertone. Now, I don't know if Silvertone's been out of the spotlight for a while, or maybe these have come back last year or the year before that. I don't really know, but this Daphne Blue really caught my attention. I, I thought that was beautiful. Now we're on to Hoffner. Hoffner is a guitar company I've not always been too excited about. I don't like that body shape very much. It's not for me, but I was still blown away by it. I mean, the quality of this guitar is, is just mind-blowing. Look at that flame on the neck. That's a real flame, too. I picked that up, and I rolled it, and it's a deep flame. Beautiful. And they come with these great certificates of authenticity, handmade in Germany really really great now as you would expect from Hofner of course we're gonna get the viola base the um, the relic viola base as you will so if you want that old like Beatles era look there you go Rickenbacker I don't know if this was new either I probably should have researched this but these five string Ricks I thought were really cool just stick into their roots their their design their image but at the same time, giving you something a little more modern. You got these crazy pickups in there, beautiful finishes. I mean, your classic Rick offerings, but yet at a more modern take. Now we go on to Fret King. Fret King is not a company I would normally uh, gravitate towards, uh, but that double neck pickup was catching my attention. This, this uh, Country Squire Music Row. I thought it was cool looking, and it played great, but its price is a bit high at $8.99. I don't know if I was into that so much. Now, Blackstar always is like a polarizing company. You either love them or you hate them, but I love the look of this new amplifier, the St. James, and plus it's crazy light, stupid loud, all valve, tone for days. I, I thought it was outstanding, too. You got to check those out. Now we're on to Cower Guitars. I love this guitar company. I think Doug Coward does a fantastic job. He's a really cool dude. I wish I got a photo with him. I never did. I was there every day talking with him. He was so approachable, so fun to hang out with. And um, I thought these guitars are just like so beautiful. And I loved seeing them there. And he sold every single one of them. This one is from a company called Ciari. I believe they're Ciari. I already forgot. But these have a folding neck. And these are designed for travel, so there's this crazy backpack that they come with, and you can throw them as a, into your this backpack and carry it onto a plane as a personal item. It's got this great mechanism that folds the neck in half, and it doesn't wear down, and you don't feel it. It's so cool. Now, this is another company I thought was great, too. It stood out to me, and this is from, I, I'm probably going to say it wrong, this is TX Watt or Tex Watt. I know this is based out of Texas, but they are these floor-based amplifier heads. There's no like button you could press on them to turn them on and off. They're just an amp, and you can put them on your pedal board, and you can you can adjust them on the fly, which is really really cool in itself. And they have British voicing and American voicing just to really help you dial in your tone. Um, I thought it was great. It sounded outstanding. You should definitely check them out. Lyman Guitars was brand new to me. I'd never heard of them before, and at first I was I was curious and. The CS2, I think it was the CS2, comes in this Midori Sour Green, and it, I just gravitated towards it. It played great, sounded great. Check them out. Now we're on to the big dogs here. Ibanez with a new JS2 with a hefty price tag of 7700 and some odd dollars. Then we got our Ibanez. This is the PF 35th anniversary uh, prototype, or the PF 35TH prototype. 
not really sure, but kind of cool looking. Not it, par it pales in comparison to the Hydra, which I mean, come on, honestly, I'm just gonna come out and say it. That thing is ugly. I know it's someone's art, but ugh, <laughs> not for me. Eddie Wong or Eddie Wang, I, I apologize for mispronouncing this name, but he stood out to me in 2020 when I first saw him in Hall E. And his amps were just crazy cool, simple, pure. Uh, I mean, unbelievable. And now he's redesigned his amps with a new image, and I think they sound better and they look great. If you've never checked him out, please do, because this is a, a company to follow. Now, this is Delphix uh, pedals, and I was just taken by the, the visual appeal of them. They didn't have any demos out, so I didn't get to check them out, but I was really into the looks of these pedals. Now we're on to the company I'm wearing a shirt for, which is Iconic Guitars. And uh, yeah, that flame is to die for. Look at that flame on the neck. I've always gravitated towards that flame, and that, that uh, silver flake finish that's been cracked, oh, wow. Then we got a seven string Strat right here with, again, the same kind of flame. Just unbelievable, unbelievable. This is another booth I hung out at a lot because I just couldn't turn away from that flame. It was unbelievable and I had to go back and look at it again and again and again. Some of the most beautiful guitars I'd ever seen. Next to Paletti, which is out of Italy and I was happy to see them represented here. This, uh, this like Telecaster Deluxe or Telecaster Deluxe style guitar, uh, Heavy Relic is, it had my heart. It really did. And someone bought it. Someone bought it out of under me. I was really sad. Not like I could afford it, but <laughs> I really wanted it. Look at that thing. I mean, wow. That's, that's a beautiful work of art. I mean, Heavy Relic. And I'm not big on Heavy Relics, but that is well done. And I was super into it. So here they're setting it up for the new buyer. And that's why it was what it was. So all that said and done, again, let me know in the comments what you thought was the best that I found and what I missed. If you are sad I didn't cover anything, I totally get it. Just let me know in the comments. And also, if you like stuff like this, it's important to make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. It helps the channel grow. It got me exposure. I got recognized. Again, thank you so much for that. But I understand if you're like, F this guy, I don't want to subscribe to his channel. I understand. You're subscribed to a lot of channels. There's a lot of stuff you're subscribed to. I, I, I don't want to overwhelm your feed. But if you would consider it, I would greatly appreciate it. And if you are really excited about this channel, make sure you hit that bell notification to be notified when I upload new content because new content is always coming. So all that said and done, again, thank you from the bottom of my heart for sharing the love and getting the word out there about the 11th fret. I do greatly appreciate it. This last weekend at NAMM was a real treat for me, both just for my ego, for my self-esteem, because sometimes you sit back and wonder, why am I doing this? Because it's a lot of work. Is anybody watching? I don't know. So now I know people are watching and it's thanks to you guys. I really, really, really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I appreciate you guys coming back. Take it easy, everybody. See you next video.